I am absolutely amazed how many people would come out on a, on a weeknight uh, to learn about this topic uh, when there are obviously a lot of things you could be doing and I'm sure a lot of you have uh, family members and friends who think you're, you're crazy. They were using a device that they called the Beast at Montauk. And the Beast was kind of a, it was extrapolated outwards, if you will, from a device that was called the, the Nazi Bell. It was also called the Diglocka. The source told me that he was one of five people who received the equipment from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and that was originally what crashed in Roswell. My job, I was brought in to basically propagate these aliens. Yes, there are aliens at Area 51, and so I worked on basically a Roswell aliens. Well, the aliens desk at S4, yes, there was about uh, 100 files, and uh, I think he said they were colored blue, and uh, they weren't very long, some had uh, a few pages, some had... Uh, Area 51 was set up to push military, science and technology faster and further than any other nation. They're kind of a fraternity of formerly secret spies and scientists and spy pilots. Swedish researchers conducted experiments which allowed them to detect fingerprints of a new, very heavy element called element 115. They finally did uh, synthesize element 115 that had the properties that I, that I stated. Each element has isotopes. For instance, uh, hydrogen has three isotopes. They're all hydrogen. There's hydrogen, protium, which would be the technical name, deuterium and tritium. That if you did certain things with the beast at Montauk, that it had created a, a temporal field, a time field. We would create aliens from the aliens. We were able to reproduce them asexually. We were never able to uh, generate a live specimen, but we were able to create several thousand, actually, over the years. And in this sense, the people who suspect the Area 51 story to be disinformation may be partially correct. But if so, it did not. the disinformation didn't originate with Bob. It didn't uh, originate with John Lear. He was a security guard at level two of S4 in Area 51 occupying at least four levels. He was aware of four. When they brought him into S4, uh, he was taken into a lab and he met uh, Barry. Uh, Barry uh, showed his things uh, about what they were doing with uh, in the lab. And that it was a flying circular shaped aircraft. It was not from Mars, it was from Russia. And the eg and engineer told me that the child-sized pilots inside were the result of ghastly human experiments in the Soviet Union. But there were two different modes the craft we found would operate in. Uh, one is called Omicron and one is called Delta. They have these probes, these kind of Sputnik-like probes, that they teleported into the heart of Russian nuclear experiments. They were studying in the, in the center of any explosion there's a time dilation field at the center. And they were actually studying the heart of those explosions for what they call the zero time point in the center of these fields. All of whom know one another. They spent most of their lives hiding what they did at work every day. Now these veterans are finally able to talk about what went on inside the base. Discredit him, you give the mainstream press another reason to vilify UFOs. You give uh, various UFO luminaries an excuse to attack it as well. I've been underground, people have been hiding me out, shifting from hideout to hideout, and the government's been on my tail. Uh, I've been killed, you've been killed, uh, you name it. I've, I've heard unbelievable stories. Very heavy uh, operating and a reactor. What he was able to do was uh, very The Omicron configuration was the standard operating mode of the craft, and it's where it used one single amplifier to maintain its elevation in the sky. The one amplifier working, it essentially produced an anti-gravitational pillar to stand on. The thing about that you have to understand about the base is you don't ask questions. You don't ask questions. If there's something you want to know, it's not wise to ask. He worked on level two, he had passed through level one. He never saw level three or level four because uh, no military people were allowed below those levels. Only very, very specific clearances could go to level three and level four. They're all hydrogen.
They have different amounts of neutrons in them. They all have one proton, which makes them hydrogen. General Maltsev's report stated, quote, I'm not a specialist on UFOs, but they seem completely devoid of inertia. They had somehow come to terms with gravity. The movement was without sound, with startling maneuverability. At present time, terrestrial machines could hardly have such capabilities. Uh, it created a, a, a huge temporal time field in which time stopped in the heart of the field and actually sucked a guy into the field and he came out the other side. Uh, the main problem I have with the UFO community is, is number one, here are people that essentially their income is derived from UFOs. Uh, essentially for them to make money and support themselves they have to come up with ridiculous stories or at least prove that they're at the forefront of knowledge. And we went with code names, I was thunder. We were dealing with Navy, Air Force, Tactical Air Command, SAC, because we all had one common goal, because we had an urgency of doing our job because lives in the, our military depend on what we were doing there. It's unidentified aerial phenomena, and that's to separate even more from the reality that there are disks, there are hard physical craft that are traveling in our airspace with impunity. What is element 115? Is it found here on Earth, or is it strictly an extraterrestrial material? 115 is strictly an extraterrestrial material. Element 115 has 115 protons in it. It's element 115. Now, depending on the number of neutrons it has, it will still be element 115, but it can be any number of isotopes of it. Particle accelerator. Uh, a particle is accelerated to high speed and then deflected up a small tube and it's aimed at the 115. This transmutes the 115. But UFOs were truly unknown. He said there's no way that it could be stealth or some other advanced aircraft. Then he conceded that his forces had been given a standing order that UFOs are not to be fired upon. He said level two consisted of size, they would hold a small airplane. And there were circular disc-shaped craft in seven of the nine bays. An area where bodies were stored in large glass cylinders you know, just just for a few minutes or so but he was covered with a when he came out the other side he was covered with an ectoplasmic goo and uh, apparently you have to go through the astral plane or it's out travel to time there's a lot of really creepy stuff that lives in the astral plane to where the craft would actually would actually continuously slide downhill yes a very awkward strange mode of propulsion we have radar reports air radar ground radar air visual ground visual we have trained observers people who have interacted with these discs.